corruption in the system. Our Katie Solt joins us now live again. Katie, you sat down with the mother. Why has she filed the complaints? Wendy, I spoke with Shannon Baskin and her lawyer, and they both say there are several instances of an abuse of power when handling the custody case. But the biggest flaw of all to Baskin is that Judge Roper awarded custody of her daughter to an ex-boyfriend who had no biological or legal ties to the child, and she wants to know why. What matters is what is right and what is wrong, what is just and what is unjust. And what is just is to have my daughter be with me. Gary Hill has never been a stepfather to her. He's never been an adoptive father. He's not her biological father. They have no legal relationship whatsoever. A child taken from her mother and placed with a man she barely knows. A ruling that Shannon Baskin and her attorney are still trying to wrap their heads around. Judge Roper was the presiding judge in Shannon Baskin's custody battle. And Baskin's attorney says in the final months of the case, there were flagrant violations of the law when Judge Roper was on the stand. In a complaint filed with the Judicial Qualification Committee, Riley states that Judge Roper would not release audio from a temporary hearing from July 2014 where the transcripts did not match what actually happened in the courtroom. He's sitting here saying, okay, you have a concern that the audio or the transcripts might be um, altered. Well, you want to exonerate yourself. You want to give exculpatory, you know, say, oh, sure, here you go. Maybe there was a mistake. We're not expecting him to be perfect. Another example Briley cites in her complaint is, quote, the court goes on to advocate for the defendant, making excuses for his domestic violence conviction. Judge Roper comes in, the interim order, playing defense attorney regarding the proceedings that happened in 2007 during Mr. Hale's plea hearing. And the fact that Judge Roper is coming in and playing defense attorney and justifying that, no excuse for it, none. In the interim order, Judge Roper states, quote, Baskins claims to be the victim of long-term domestic violence at the hands of Hale. There is no evidence of this contention except one incident in 2007 when Baskin was pregnant with William. Hale was arrested for family violence battery. Hale entered a no-low plea to a reduced charge of battery and was sentenced as a first offender. Judge Roper goes on to say, quote, the court finds that Hale was most likely acting in self-defense but in anger handled Baskin roughly. These photos are of the bruises Baskin suffered to her back in the incident Roper found to be a self-defense situation. The final order granted Hale custody of the three children, including Baskin's biological daughter, citing Hale as the father. Roper names Gary Hill all through it as her father. I thought father meant biological. I thought father meant stepfather. I thought father meant an adopted parent, not an ex-boyfriend. Also in the final order, a gag order issued by Judge Roper for all parties, preventing all parties from talking about the case for 11 years, specifically on the form suspicion that Roper altered transcripts. The gag order says, quote, plaintiff, defendant, and their attorneys are hereby restrained and enjoined from putting, placing, or causing to be placed any allegation that any transcript in this case has been altered upon or in any social media, website, or other public medium, or speaking or corresponding with any print, radio, television media about any such allegation. Briley has challenged the gag order in federal court and filed the petition on April 20th. Before the custody was granted, Hale owed Baskin a total of $12,299.37, an amount that, according to Judge Roper, Hale no longer had to pay to Baskin after he was granted custody. In May 2015, Baskin and her attorney filed an appeal of the permanent injunction with the Supreme Court of Georgia, and they also appealed the custodial issues to the Court of Appeals. And as Baskin waits for an answer, all she wants now is justice. When you're a mother and your very best that you could do as a human being is not good enough. Strong, baby, strong. It'll break you to your core. This is bigger than just Shannon Renee Baskin. This is bigger than my children and my family. This is for all families. 
who have gone through it before me and who are to go through it while I'm going through it and who is to come. When I called Judge Roper to see if he would respond to these allegations, he simply said, quote, I cannot talk about an open custody case and hung up the phone. I also reached out to Hale and he told me he was not able to talk to me about the case at this time due to the gag order issued by Judge Roper. We will continue to follow this story for updates and for more stories on the Augusta family court system, head over to WFXG.com and click under the news section. We'll be right back after this. Okay, what I'm going to do is show you what's going on. Now, this is in a different state, but this is operates along with this crew. They're wonderful people. And I got into uh, some issues here in Wayne County, Indiana, over a then four-year-old grandson who apparently had warrants put on his head by a, a group of people, one of them being a title abstracts company. A Sean Sorrell notarized document stating that my daughter was married. She has not been married, and they took the grandchildren's social security numbers, and nothing has been done to date. As a matter of fact, there's been criminal acts to date. Judge uh, Horn, who you're going to see in just a moment, allowed uh, allowed police would not take the identity theft reports. Uh, we had to go to the federal level. They don't take any reports. My husband and I pay taxes. We've been hardworking our whole life, and... Uh, we're law-abiding citizens of the community. Uh, besides that, I'm, I'm a woman. I know who I am. They need to know who they are. And I want to show you the judicial mill. They're talking about the budget in 2012. This is before I discovered the fraud. But Shannon and Katie, this is the way these places operate. You're going to see something that probably was never meant to be seen. This is before... They knew I knew about the fraud, so they felt very free to come in and talk about issues. So this is July the 24th, 2012, and there's going to be some judges come in for court. I'm not saying all the judges do it. They're going to talk about a system here, and this system's operating in Georgia. They're sharing cases between the federal and the state at this point. Nobody's keeping an eye on the judiciary. And uh, I'm telling you, this is absolutely, here comes, uh, this is court services. A little bit messed up. This is Eric Coulter. Holt, Coulter. He's going to leave. He's with the health department. But after this, you'll see them talk to the judge. This is the uh, Wayne County, Indiana Common Council and Commissioners, Wayne County Commissioners, approving the budget for the year 2013. This is in 2012. The meetings drastically changed after I uncovered the fraud and started reporting it. Because I was getting no help locally, I had no choice. Had the police taken my report and did their job by a taxpayer, you can't treat your taxpayers this way. You won't have any income to operate government, folks. You can only operate off of fake identities so long. And they want the children. There's a system of juvenile... Uh, juveniles at operation here that don't really exist and what happens when they have juveniles in the system or any kind of family violence they get federal grants for that uh, the county does and so does the city the, and the state they apply for federal grants that are paid to them and in addition to that the the child support that was dismissed basically there is still a warrant for that and somebody's actually committing securities fraud with all of this, every single page of a court case, they they have a caseload and they're duplicating identities. And, and you will see the judges talk about it. And I will point out the judge that did this to my daughter. The other judges, I don't, I don't, uh, I've seen a couple of them. And I tell you that they're, uh, I didn't see the behavior I saw out of this particular judge I'm going to point out. And I will point it out as I go along. Here we go. My staff and I think it let me turn that down. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. You can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we about five minutes. Corey's here. Corey's here. Okay. I can come on in now. Great. 
Judge Todd was expecting to be here, but he's actually still on the bench, and uh, he needed to finish that up. So he, he may come in, but he may not. And uh, Judge Colger was not available either. Okay. This is, uh, they've identified him as David Jones. I don't know him. This is court services. And there's going to be a Judge Horn and a uh, Judge uh, Delahanty. And Judge Todd, Judge Colbert is another judge, but Judge Horn is the one that I've had uh, experience with, and so has my husband and uh, Gabriel and Denny and Carl. We were held in the courtroom as audience members in my daughter's case while he allowed a director, Tammy Lynn Ortman of Lewis and Capps Law Firm, to run a fake mortgage through the case and prosecute her wrongfully. And they absolutely have committed crimes and abuse of power, brought upon the court and brought upon the personam, and nothing has been done to date. And this uh, was discovered in 2012, and it is now October 2015. And this is why there's a mill going on. You're going to see him talk about several things, and I'm going to play this. And thank you, Katie Soltz and Shannon. We'll send this to Katie so she can see exactly how they're operating down in Georgia because they're doing it all over the place. This administration we have is absolutely crazy with power. They've abused their power. And you can't have judges do giving testimony from the bench. That makes them a witness. They need to be questioned as to their financial interest. I'm about to show you. Yes, on the court services budget, um, the, the judges each just felt that that was imperative for their staff um, to advocate on their behalf, and um, of course the, the uh, group here knows that raises had not been given for some time, so they just felt like that was an important thing to do um, on behalf of their staff. And that was calculated at what? Yeah, it was five percent. Uh, five percent, yes. Just for clarification, this court services record here is only for circuit court, Superior 1 and Superior 2. Right. Superior 3 has a separate one because they're a totally different uh, type of court. So just clarification for... Yes, I believe this the is the second, second budget cycle of the combined court services budget. Right. Seems to be working pretty good. Why you run a little short on some funds? Yeah, absolutely. I think that was the intent of it was because there are a lot of uncertainties with um, expenses for the courts and trial prep and, and appeals and various natures that, that save time on your part and their part on moving money around and appropriating or, or reappropriating. And, and I guess just for clarity. Are we going to go through each item, or did you kind of lead us through that, or ask questions as we go? Ask questions. Go real okay. quick. I see you've got uh, increase there. Eight thousand. Did we have to transfer some this year? On 2247. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's an increased cost there for Westlaw, and that again is just a, it's a, a an amount that is unknown from year to year. 
So just an increase on that service? Uh, well, yeah, actually, actually, we're on a three-year cycle. Yeah. So we try to keep the Westlaw account for the same amount for the three-year cycle. We sign a three-year contract. Okay. Our cycle was up. This will um, stop in a moment. I've already done this several times. But this is, uh, you can't see me yet. You'll see him again. This is just the honor roll on, on. This is because this is the deal. You're supposed to use the attorney license name. So it's H-O-N, period, Gregory Alton Horn that operates Superior Court 2. And in my daughter's case, it was 89D02-12069. Dash MF zero 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 three four three. The this is this is the judge that I've had experience with, actual experience, and he actually held all of us wrongfully as audience members and watched us, had us watch what they were doing to my daughter, a young mother of two children, and one of the children has ninety seven warrants under his social. They built a warrant system here in this city where they'll write traffic tickets, et cetera, and make an identity. The title abstracts is owned by the, the, is housed with the county and city attorneys, and they backdate the alter title policies and potential buyers' names by a number of years, taking it back to a former foreclosure, let's say. Then that makes the buyer the seller at the closing table. Then they take the identity and have that person maybe take a dead veteran's property and quick claim deed it, or they'll take a warrant um, for child support and they'll use it behind the scenes to come in as an heir to that property and take the property and the city and county are actually the investors on these properties. Then they hire services, servicers like JP Morgan and GM, GMAC and, and various servicers to collect mortgages and this is all fraud. It's a mill. They're operating a mill but this is about children. So this whole thing's about children, but when we go back to him, just watch him because I know from experience what this man has done. And he, and there there that's being handled. I want to show you, Shannon, and I want to show um, Katie. And so it is what it is. We get increased to whatever it is. We're virtually down to no books. We we have virtually no books in the in the law library at all. It's all Westlaw when we're all on Westlaw. <clears throat> and I can vouch that there's not really anything that you can do from it. I mean, they just set the price and it's a yeah. monopoly. Yeah. I mean, they, I, I've tried to negotiate with them, tried to get them down. I told them you guys were meanies. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it didn't work. <laughs> The next increase is, is in 30, contractual 20, professional services. That is uh, the services of two guardian ad items that provide the service to the court. Um, and that is a, those are two contractual um, folks that are employees. Uh, they are not. Um, no, the guardian items were not directly employed by the courts in them. No, they're, con they're contractual employees, and I would say for the last two or three years, I think if you look, they have been returning about 60% of their contract costs. In other words, we charge for their services, so we return about 60% of their costs. They charge for their services. So Shannon, when you were charged for the guardian ad litem, um, they are contractual guardian ad litems. And, and even if they're employees, they charge you an exuberant rate based on what they pay them. They charge the parents for the abuse of power of these guardian ad litems, who oftentimes, you've seen what's happened in Georgia, 
So these guardian ad litems have great power to make or break a person. So they charge you for that, and they return about 60%. Now he's and he's going to admit to a few other things in a moment, such as the state board doesn't get what he has in his coffer. They're doing capper funds and they're running all this through the pensions. So in the city, I'm from Richmond, Indiana, in Wayne County, Indiana, and you're in the a Columbia Court under Richmond County, in Georgia. They're all tied together because the federal and state judiciary did a case management plan marrying like cases. So through the key case sites, uh, uh, key sites like um, Westlaw key citation, that means a literal warrant. So with the fake identities of these children, I found and, and, and I happen to have the children with me. However, they have hijacked their identity they're sending them to various people in different counties, and this one man has like eight foster children that I happen to know. Two of them are from my daughter's home, their identities. He's collecting payments from the state of Indiana for welfare when those children do not exist. A judge over in Vanderburg County then changes their name, and everything's confidential under the juvenile system. They're going to talk about a 4D court. That's the support court, I believe, and that's a separate court. This judge won't, but he is going to admit that the state is not seeing funds, which means that I need his W. I need to know if he's got a W-9. If he doesn't, I'm going to give him one, and I want to see the 4490s that he's required to file, file with the IRS because all one has to do is the CAFR funds, which I'll do after this, to show you how the city keeps some money hidden from everybody in the county, and this is what they're operating and how they're doing it. They are selling us like livestock. And you happen to have a live woman, young lady, that has basically been sold for some bond on a, on a, a warrant, if you will, on unpaid support that they have now hijacked and they're using, plus the domestic violence fund. And that's talked about here as well. So I'll try to be quiet, let you watch it. But this is a, this Judge Horn of Superior 2. And he's been running this scam for quite a while, and it's not only him, it's several other attorneys, and, and uh, if anybody wants to look, it's under Carol Keen, K-E-I-H-N on YouTube, Public Official Corruption. And there's the absolute proof of all these documents to what I'm saying is true, and those documents are from the court because I went and got a shadow docket with the help of Deputy Sheriff Laura Roberts and a Treasury clerk as well. The next increase is, is in contractual professional services. That is uh, the services of two guardian ad litems that provide the service to the court, um, and that is a, those are two contractual um, folks. That are always, uh, they are not. Um, no, the guardian lions were not directly employed by the courts in the. No, they're, con they're contractual employees, and I would say for the last two or three years, I think if you look, they have been returning about 60% of their contract costs. In other words, we charge for their services, so we return about 60% of their costs. But again, this is based on it's uh, it's time to give employees a raise. They're contract employees, but you built in a raise basically for, yeah, for we're, them as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Judge, one other question. When when uh, we had a conversation not too long ago, uh, you I can't remember which who it was, but one of you at least expressed some concern about being able to track expenditures uh, for reporting. Right. Is is that something that you've you've been able to work out and and live within this structure, 
or is it something that it's an ongoing really process that we're going to have to try to okay try to work through. So it, the, these reports don't match up with the state reports. Right. So just as a matter of information for everybody. These reports don't match up with the state reports. This is in July the 24th. This is on July 24th, according to this broadcast of 2012. It, it may be that over time, if we can't get the state reports to fit within our budget structure, we may have to make some tweaks to this to allow them to be able to track uh, each individual court's expenditures for the reports that they have to do for uh, for the state. Uh, I, I might add, I did attend a court's administrator meeting on behalf of the judges some month or six weeks ago, and there's, a, there's an ongoing effort at state court administration because they recognize that across the state to work on that as well. It, it, the magnitude of it, I think, is much more than just realigning numbers. Um, so it is a, an ongoing project that they've taken on as well, so there might be. I'll include the link. So he's basically stating the state knows this, the state courts. So when you go to Georgia state court, they already know this. It's the same in Georgia. It's the same in every state because they're feeding it up into the federal, through the federal state case management plan. Some technical assistance that their reports is kind of a, maybe a compromise between um, the, the, the quarterly reports that the courts do and, and kind of the systematic reporting. And I guess I just want to make clear that as, as we made some of these changes uh, for the sake of efficiencies, um, we certainly didn't intend to create any additional work for, for you guys. And so if it comes to pass that we need to make adjustments, please don't hesitate to bring those up so that we can, we can talk about them and work out something that, that works for everybody. Anyone have any other question on court services? Superior Court 3. I thought that looked like mine, Gary. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Same thing as far as the budgets, it's just the, the same request that the other gentleman made. I'm not, I, I don't know this. Uh, gentleman personally but I've, he, I've seen him a couple of times he's always been very pleasant so it's a uh, judge Delohanty, I believe is his name and he's in the Superior Court 3 and he's going to and, and he is in charge I believe it's a, most a lot of the minor cases come through him the minor children so he's going to speak specifically to the juvenile system and his knowledge of this and and he's going to say that the state mandates the juveniles and actually pays the courts ahead of time based on a quota. This is damning evidence. And uh, they, they quit doing this after I discovered the fraud locally. They didn't want to uh, publicize much, so they cleaned up the act quite a bit. And I'll include the links at the bottom of the page of all of this. Same thing as far as the budgets, it's just the, the same request that the other gentleman made for the staff on the uh, top section there. Uh, the only other increase on that page looks like his reference books, which just drives me nuts. But when the legislature does these massive overhauls of things, in particular the juvenile code or the civil code, you get a new book. And like it or not, there's there's no uh, trying to whittle them down on how much the charges are going to be. They just send you a bill. Here's your book. Here's your bill. And it's a monopoly. And it seems like we always run short in the reference book. So I just asked Corey and Bob if they would just go ahead and uh, build it in up front instead of making a have to transfer towards the end of the year type situation. I think we're, tri we're living well within our means on the supplies, the other supplies. Though. Anybody else on the other item? Yes. Thank you. I can get a yellow mark on the next. Oh, sorry. A little bit more to that budget. Yeah. Uh, nope. Okay. No. No yellow on that page? All right. No yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 
it too easy for you, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I went to yellow because that's caution. I like a compass by not getting in yellow. That's good. Again, referring back to the conversation we had a several weeks ago, um, one of the issues was uh, the sound system. I believe it was a recording. There was some, there was a, was in a, a judge that was in your area, wasn't it? The, he had the horn. Yeah. Yeah, Riz has been working with us too on, on some microphones to help supplement what's already in place. And, Right. And, uh, and I, he knows I, more about than I do. I raised that question because I don't I don't see a, a capital equipment request here. Or we did not. Um, is that have you got? No, we're not that far along in it out. really yet. And I know in your case that you were having a lot of problems with. That's kind of been a continuing problem in the courts. For some reason, we can't seem to resolve the sound systems in there to work. And I think Jeff will just have to kind of. That's because there's fake cases running through the courts and they don't want a sound system and they don't want to give the sound, the video recording or the audio. They have it available. I've seen it. I've seen the discs that are in the CCS, the, court, the clerk of court summaries. And there, are, there is a sound system, although they'll say here there is not. There is a sound system. And the, the judge is going to talk about how they don't, he doesn't know what they want exactly yet because there are many, many pretend cases going on here behind the scenes. There is a judicial mill and they are selling our children. It's kids for cash except they're paper doll people and this allows the flow of immigrants and immigrants children through the system under assumed identities. Work on it and right now we really don't have anything to give you. Okay. I think IT might have might have thought of there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's not. Uh, you know, it's got to be the fall through the cracks yeah. because that that was a <clears throat> significant concern. So we can we can address that when you're ready. Um, rather than through the budget process, we can do an additional appropriation if we need to. Okay. We just don't even like like it's been said. We, we're working with Rich, and we just don't know. Good. At this point, no one knows, seems to know what we even need, so. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? Any comments you'd like to make, Judge? I'm sorry? Any comments you would like to make? Um, I think I have a couple of other, yeah, depending on some budgets to deal with. we got four days coming up. The, the CASA budget is really kind of a mixed bag because the, the director's salary is paid out of the court's budget and then the, the money that you're seeing here is, is money that the state is nice enough to send us every year and it's, it's based upon some very bizarre formula uh, that, that basically when you boil away the fat it's how many, how many juvenile cases you ended up with in the the year prior, and they'll they'll send you money. It's not really. I don't think there's a grant because they don't have to apply and report back. Uh, but it, but it's money uh, that we have to match, and we do that through the um, uh, salary that Ms. Bowen has paid as the director. And then this, the, what you're seeing up here, is how the state's money is as. I think that's split. That's 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 we moved on to something else. Do you want Casa? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's okay. Forty. I'm sorry. I was. Then Union County, County left off with us. Union County picked something to us. Thank you, Al. You're right. Uh, we, we, we joined teams with Union County uh, to, to kind of show some efficiencies. And so the money that they get, which is far less than what Wayne County gets because their case numbers are smaller, uh, they, they basically send that to us. And then part of Karen's salary is paid out of Union County's uh, state funds as well. They said the state was sending money, but we can't handle it. So they came here one day, Judge. Uh, Cox, do it. We'll give you the money and you do the job. Yeah, it is worked out well for both counties. Yeah. Really has. Yeah. Okay. Ready now. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. 
Yeah, that interpreter was kind of falls underneath too. Yeah, we just approved that. Yes. Yeah. I didn't see any yellow on that one. That's why I wanted to go back to that. <laughs> They're talking about an interpreter for people who can't speak English, which means immigration. Now, this is enough. Um, I'm going to include the links to this, and I'm going to send this to Shannon, and this I'm going to put it out. So this is how they operate behind the scenes. I can uh, also include a CAFR fund, but this is absolutely what's going on in all the courts across the land. This was in 2012, and they went back to like the year 2004 in the conversations under this uh, to the year 2004. They went back many years, so this is how they're operating a mill, and the lawyers will always have money, and none of the lawyers that are good can go up against them because they won't have a career. But I tell you this, and these clerks, there's a clerk there in Georgia, and I tell you that they need to grow a set of uh, kahunas and get off of it because I wouldn't want to work where I had to do such a thing. You have to have some integrity and some scruples about you, and quit acting like it's too much for you. Just because you got in the profession and found out it's as corrupt as any criminal enterprise you'd ever want to be in, it's not the victim's fault. It's not that young lady who's living with a man she doesn't even know. And I hope that this will help you and others like you.